So now that you've had a chance to think about what factors are going to impact on how quickly heat transfers through a block such as this one, let's write down an equation to describe this. So what we're trying to come up with is an equation to describe the rate at which heat flows through this block. So this is the amount of heat per unit time which is flowing through it. And we know that an energy divided by a time gives us a power. So what we're trying to find out is the power through this block. So we can write P is equal to Q over T, where Q is the heat flowing through the block and T is the time over which that heat flows. So when you were thinking about factors, hopefully you realized that the rate at which heat flows is going to be proportional to the surface area. Now intuitively you'd be a bit aware of this because on a cold night you'll tend to ball yourself up into a little ball in bed to reduce your surface area and keep yourself nice and warm. And in the middle of summer where it's really hot you tend to spread out to increase that surface area. So P is proportional to the surface area A. Now hopefully you'd also realize that it's inversely proportional to the thickness. So in the middle of winter, you put on lots of layers of clothing to increase the thickness through which that heat has to pass, which reduces the rate at which heat leaves your body. And so we can say that P is also proportional to one divided by the thickness delta X. And it's also proportional to the temperature difference. So if we have a really big temperature difference, say a really hot cup of coffee on a cold day, then heat is going to leave that cup of coffee really quickly compared with a more tepid cup of coffee on a cooler day at which the heat leaves the coffee much more slowly. So the power is also proportional to the temperature difference delta T. So combining these together, we can say, well, the power is proportional to the area times the temperature difference divided by the thickness. And because this is proportional, we can replace it with a proportionality constant, which we will call K. And K in this case is known as the thermal conductivity constant. So we can write this as equal to Ka delta T divided by delta X. Now, if we're considering the amount of heat flowing through a narrow region, then we can break this down into a differential equation and we can write P is equal to Ka dt dx and we can put absolute value signs around there. The heat always flows from the warmer body to the cooler body. So we just want this as a positive number and then we can work out which direction the heat is flowing. So the thermal conductivity constant K depends upon the material. Materials which are good conductors of heat have a much higher thermal conductivity than materials which are poor conductors of heat. The units for the thermal conductivity are watts per meter per Kelvin or equivalently watts per meter per degree C. So these units are the same because a change of one Kelvin is the same as a change of one degree C. So metals tend to have fairly high thermal conductivities, so between about 70 and 500-ish. Diamond actually has a surprisingly high thermal conductivity of 2300, so diamond is an absolutely excellent conductor of heat. Building materials tend to have fairly low thermal conductivities because we don't want a building which is leaking heat all the time. So for example, asbestos has a thermal conductivity of 0.08 watts per meter per Kelvin and bricks tend to be around about 0.7 watts per meter per Kelvin. Air and gases also tend to be fairly poor conductors of heat. If we want to stop heat escaping from something, it can be useful to leave an air gap because the heat does not pass well through air. So for air, the thermal conductivity is around about 0 0.023 watts per meter per Kelvin. So let's have a look at a demo where we'll be investigating the thermal conductivity of some different metals now. What we're going to look at now is a demonstration showing the different thermal conductivities of different metals. So what we have here is aluminium with the red flags 
attached. So the thermal conductivity of aluminium is 238 watts per metre per Kelvin. Here we have brass with a thermal conductivity of 109 watts per metre per Kelvin. Here we've got copper with a thermal conductivity of 397 watts per metre per Kelvin. And here's stainless steel with a thermal conductivity of 79.5 watts per metre per Kelvin. Now what I'm going to do in a minute is light this Bunsen burner, which will provide heat to this metal plate, which will be conducted along each of these different metal arms. Now I want, I want you to think about is on which of these arms are the flags going to drop off first. The flags are connected by little globs of wax. When that wax is melted due to the heat, the flags will drop off. So let's light the Bunsen burner now. And now before we proceed further with this demonstration, I want you to make a prediction about which coloured flags are going to drop first. <laughs> 